When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he prepared and preordained the heaven and the reward which was to be given to the just sons of the church after their sojourn upon the earth, then already was decreed the union of the humanity with the word, thereby meriting grace as their head, and with him his mother most holy. Having destined the greater part of this grace for the mother and the son, he then disposed and arranged similar gifts of glory for the other saints. When with a certain law and compass he enclosed the depths, namely, when he decided to close the abysses of his divinity in the person of the Son according to a certain law and measure which no living being can ever compass or understand, he delineated this sphere and circumference where none could nor ever can enter except only the word, since none but himself can ever fill his place. For thus he was able to empty and humiliate his divinity in the humanity, then both humanity and divinity in the womb of the most holy Mary, afterwards in a small quantity and species of the bread and wine, and finally in the narrow space of sinful mortal hearts. All this is indicated by the words, abysses, law, and circle or limits. They are called certain on account of their vast bearing, and also on account of the certainty with which they were to be fulfilled, in spite of seeming impossibility, and on account of the difficulty of explaining them in words. It certainly did not appear feasible that the divinity should be subject to law, nor that it should enclose itself within determined limits. But the wisdom and the power of that same Lord made it possible, and has accomplished it by enclosing himself in a designated, created being. When he established the sky above and poised the fountains of the waters, when he encompassed the seas with its bounds and set a law to the waters that they should not pass their limits, he calls here the just heavens, for that is what they are as God remains and dwells within them by grace and through it, according to each one's disposition, gives them courage and firmness to rise above the earth as long as they are pilgrims. Afterwards, he gives them a place and a dwelling in the heavenly Jerusalem according to their merits. For them he poised the fountains and has divided them, distributing to each one with equity. He weighs the gifts of glory, the virtues, the helps, and the perfections according to the dispositions of his wisdom. When he resolved to make the distributions of these waters of grace, he also resolved to give to the humanity united to the divinity all the ocean of graces and gifts which naturally flow from the divinity in its union with the only begotten of the Father. Although this ocean was infinite, he placed confines to it namely, the humanity, in which was to dwell the plentitude of the divinity. And it was enclosed thirty-three years within these confines, in order that he might dwell among men, and in order that what happened to the three apostles on Tabor Mount might not happen to all men. In the same moment in which this entire ocean and all the rivers of grace reached Christ our Lord as being nearest to the deity, they also redounded in his most holy mother as being nearest to her only begotten son. For without the mother, and precisely such a mother, the gifts and graces of her son could not have been disposed of in such order and with such high perfection. Nor did the admirable harmony of the celestial and spiritual machinery and the distribution of the gifts of the church militant and triumphant rest on any other foundation. When he balanced the foundation of the earth, I was with him, forming all things. The works at extra are common to the three divine persons, for they are one God, one wisdom, one power. Therefore it was unavoidably necessary that the word, in whom according to the divinity all things are made, should be in union with the Father in making them. But here more is meant, for also the incarnate word was already present together with his most holy mother in the divine will. Thus, just as through the word, as far as he is God, all things were made, so also for him in the first place, and because he is the most noble and most worthy end, were created the foundations of the earth and all that is contained in it. <laughs> 